Thank you all for joining us for the inaugural Texas FIRST Robotics Competition Workshop hosted by FIRST RGV. A little bit about us and then we will turn it over to our presenters today. FIRST RGV is a nonprofit founded in 2015 that supports the FIRST community in the Rio Grande Valley, which is an area approximately three hours long by two hours wide, sits next to the border of Mexico. Yes, in Texas, it's easier to measure by driving hours than miles just because Texas is just large. Since 2015, we have seen explosive growth of teams in our first Lego League and first Tech Challenge program, but our growth in the first robotics competition program is positive, but we are not where we need to be on ensuring access to the more than 250,000 students in the K through 12 space here in the Valley. With our events like this, we are doing our part to create awareness of our efforts and the need for strong sponsors and mentors to help our community. We are proud Texans and am honored to be part of the First in Texas Robotics Territory. Our organization is proud to be hosting this weekend's event. If we have any technical issues, please remain patient. We will get them resolved as quickly as possible. While you're engaging in the chat, asking questions and saying hi to your neighboring team or maybe a team across Texas, we ask that you remain on topic and know that this session is being recorded for teams to take advantage of this great information later. We will post this information on the first RGV YouTube channel and you can access it directly by visiting youtube.firstrgv.org or by searching for first RGV on YouTube. I want to personally thank the FIRST Robotics Competition teams across Texas that have come together this weekend to make this live event possible and for the hard work of our FIRST senior mentors and AmeriCorps VISTAs across Texas that stand ready to help support our teams. On behalf of FIRST RGV, we hope everyone has remained safe during this pandemic and we are confident that all of the partners across Texas will be getting ready to bring you a robotic season soon. Thank you. Awesome. Oops, I'm on the wrong slide. All right, everyone. Um, welcome to FRC Wiring Part 1. Um, I am Riley from 3481 Bronkbots. And I'm Dylan from 3481 Bronkbots. A um, little bit about me and why I'm at least semi-qualified to do this. I've been our wiring lead um, for about three seasons now, um, going on my fourth. And this is my seventh year um, with Bronx Bots as an organization. Hi, I'm Dylan. Uh, I'm a, an alumni and a mentor for Bronx Bots. I was on Bronx Bots for five years from 2014 to 2019. Uh, and now I'm at UTSA as a cybersecurity major. So I just want to cover um, a little bit of the basics um, before we go into this. Um, so kind of first, um, I want to cover the difference between CAN and PWM. Um, I am going to stop sharing just for a moment here and switch around my video. Give me just a moment. Awesome. awesome. Okay. So um, can wire. Can wire is essentially, um, I like to think of it as a, as a loop that's just not open on the end. So can is going to be any of this green and yellow wire that you see here. It's two strands. Um, I like to coil it because that keeps it a lot more organized, uh, but that is not necessarily how it always will be. And it's going to start um, at either your PDP or your Rio, and it's going to hit um, a lot of major components, and we'll go over that later. Um, it's, it's essentially a long chain of wires that, that moves from one component to the next. The other thing that I want to cover is PWM wire. PWM wire is a three wire um, as opposed to a two wire can, um, and those go straight from the component um, right to one of these 10 slots on your Rio. So kind of quick, basic um, go over of CAN versus PWM. Um, the next thing that I want to cover is wire gauge. Um, as your number gets larger, your gauge gets smaller, as you can see on that little chart over there. And um, I typically use um, between 18 and 12 gauge wire with the exception of battery wire. Battery wire is usually um, six gauge. Um, 
positive wire is red, uh, negative wire is black, kind of general information. And then I wanna to cover tools. Um, and I will stop sharing again for that. So first kind of big tool, crimps. Um, these are used particularly for Andersons, um, which we'll go over later. Um, the next thing is snips, very typical pair of snips. There's all kinds of different snips. It really doesn't matter what kind. A uh, multimeter, again, all different kinds of these. This is just the ones that we use. A Wago tool or a small screwdriver. Um, I usually keep one flathead and one Phillips head. Um, and an angled version, um, which is right here. Um, this is good for particularly hard to reach spaces. Um, a pair of wire strippers. I use these. I find that they're very quick and easy. A label maker um, to keep your wires organized. Zip ties, a large bag, and something that I did not put on here was electrical tape, your best friend. So back to sharing. There we go. Um, so next thing I'm gonna quickly go over is a couple of diagrams. Um, this first diagram is straight from first. Um, I don't particularly love this diagram because it's not color coded. So this is our second diagram. This is borrowed. I found this on Chief Delphi. It is open source from 3128 Aluminum Narwhals. Um, and as you can see in this top right corner, I put a little QR code. You guys are more than welcome to scan that, to use it, do whatever you want with it, or you can just look it up. Um, but I recommend having these um, in your general area while you're doing wiring because it's a really good reference point. So now we're gonna go ahead and hit our major components. So the first major component of your kind of FRC wiring control system is going to be your power distribution panel. Um, so as you can see on the slide, the power distribution panel, basically what it's responsible for is sending power from the battery to almost all of the different components on your robot. Uh, it also is a CAN endpoint. So like Riley said earlier, CAN is a daisy chain through all of the different components and then over to your uh, PDP. No. Um, and then the other thing that the PDP is responsible for is it holds a number of breakers and fuses. And the cool thing about that is the PDP is essential in preventing your robot from browning out or pulling too much power. Uh, so actually, if uh, you have a number of different types of fuses, as you can see on the slide, and if we actually go look at a real PDP here, let's angle that camera a little bit, Riley. So you can see down here that we have, so this is a PDP, that big green, red, black um, module. And you can see we have a number of different ports here. Now these ones up here are bigger than these. The big ones up here are what we call 40 amp ports. And these here could be 30 or 20 amp ports. Now, if you don't know what amps are, that's okay. In the session this afternoon, we're gonna go over voltage, amperage, all of the different kind of physics side of electronics. But basically, the basic rundown is they determine how much power your devices can pull. So if you have too many motors on your robot that at one time are pulling too much power, you run the risk of browning out or having other issues with your robot. And these fuses that limit the amount of power that can go through it help counter that. Additionally, you have your RoboRio PCM, which we'll go over, and VRM, which we'll also go over, ports here just for power. So the PDB is not responsible for data, only for power supplying your robot. And the other thing that Dylan mentioned is that CAN endpoint that's found right here. So if we flip back to the slide now. Awesome. Um, so your next thing is your main breaker. Now your main breaker connects your battery to your PDP. Um, the interesting thing about the main breaker as opposed to the breakers that are on the PDP is that the is basically a switch. Um, so it you, that's what you use to switch your robot on and off. Uh, but if too much power is pulled from the battery, it will automatically switch your robot off. That is very rare for that to happen, but it does happen in the main breaker, aside from being an off switch, is basically a safety feature. It helps prevent um, flow back into the battery. So if for some reason power is being fed backwards into the battery, that could cause uh, a fire. Um, additionally, it prevents overdraw from the battery. So significantly overdrawing from the battery at one point to the point where it could like melt your wires. The breaker prevents things like that. So you won't have those issues on your robot. Um, 
Now, so on this board, you see this main breaker over here. You see I've got a battery tucked along this back corner. So you've got battery to- um, The VRM is responsible for powering those because the PDP would be way too powerful for that. So here's our VRM kind of tucked in the corner right here. You'll notice a very similar looking module right next to it. That's the PCM. We'll go over that a little bit later. Um, but this is currently connected to a POE, which is a, another something that we'll go over um, in a little bit. And the VRM does take its power from the PDP. So all power on the robot routes through the big black PDP and then goes out to things like the VRM. And then the VRM can there distribute the lower power. Awesome. So uh, next thing that we have to talk about, and this is one of the really, really big ones um, as far as importance goes, is the Robo Rio. The Robo Rio is the brain of your robot. It's an industrial robot controller made by uh, National Instruments, although I think they just rebranded it and I. Um, and it has all of the data and logical connections on your robot, or most of them at least. So it's responsible for sending your power, uh, for telling your motors what to do, inputting your sensors, all of that. So you've got PWM connections, which are those three wire data connections that Riley showed you earlier with the rack, rack, wow, black, red, and white. Um, it's got, it's a CAN endpoint. So it's the other end of the chain from the PDP. It starts at the Rio and ends at the PDP. It's got your servo connections, any robot connection points. So your ethernet to your radio, which is how you communicate with your um, laptop or your driver station. That is all through the Robo Rio. Um, or you can connect the Robo Rio directly to your computer. Additionally, that big serial port that you see in the middle of the Robo Rio is useful for either a NavX or a more board, which are um, external accessories made by Rev um, and Kawhi Labs. Um, it's got your analog and digital input output connections. So that's for your sensors, your limit switches, stuff like that. Relays, which aren't used too much anymore, but that's basically if you needed to turn something on or off. Um, USB for external drive cams. So I know in 2019 with the sandstorm period, we used those a lot. And you have to remember to always update your reel. So if we take a look at the Rio on the board now. Yeah, um, so on our on our board, um, there's a couple things I wanna point out. One, on this particular Rio, we do have a Navex right here. This pink foam that you see is just to protect these pins. Um, it doesn't have any purpose other than that. It's just nice for travel and packaging and um, such. Um, you'll notice as well that um, our little power thing over here, these little, this is usually black, this little green one here, we actually purchase as extras. Those do need to be replaced. Um, I find about once a season, they start to wear out, the screws start to get stripped. Um, and that is not something you want to mess with in the middle of a competition. Trust me, I would know. Um, like we said earlier, it's a CAN endpoint. So you'll notice that it, our CAN kind of starts here and travels over to our motor controllers and then ends back here at our PDP. Um, but other than that, this is just kind of your general um, Robo Rio. Um, couple more things that I wanted to point out. So our DIO ports here, there's 10. DIO is for something that's going to return either a zero or a one. So for example, a limit switch, which is something we'll cover later. And AIO or analog in um, is gonna be something that returns um, something that's not a zero or a one. So for example, potentiometer or encoders, um, which we will also go over later, but those are um, things that will that help you um, with more autonomous programs. So moving back onto the slides here, um, a little bit more on the Robo Rio, so you can see there where it's boxed in in red. So uh, the Robo Rio is also what interfaces with the driver station. So uh, if, you, if you're not using a radio, which by the way, you only use for a wireless connection, um, then you can use the Robo Rio to connect directly to your driver station using an Ethernet or a printer cable. So obviously the printer cable would go in that little USB type B port. Um, and then your Ethernet goes in the Ethernet port. Um, and there's a couple debugging tips and tricks with the Robo Rio that we will talk about in the second session. The Robo Rio uh, is one of the components that's super useful for debugging. If something's wrong with your robot, if you know what to look for, the Robo Rio can tell you a lot. All right, so moving on. Um, next thing is the robot signal light. So the robot signal light connects to the Robo Rio, um, and basically it not only signifies a connection between the driver station and the robot, but it also talks about what state your robot is in. So if you understand, so this this um, table that's at the bottom here, and that's all. Look, you can look that up if you Google 
the robot signal light for FRC. This entire table will come up. We just snagged that off of the manufacturer's website. Um, but if you are, like if I'm sitting in the bleachers at an FRC competition and I see that there's something wrong with the robot, the first thing, oops, the first thing I will do is as I'm sitting there in the bleachers, I will look out at the robot signal light on that robot because it's bright enough to where you can see it from the stand